Hi, my name is Ali Shesova from Bridge Digital. In this video, we're going to talk about power supply control methods, and in particular, three of the most popular ones, which is just a standard voltage mode control, voltage mode with voltage feed forward, and peak current mode. We're going to describe how they work, why we use them, and which one is most suitable per your application. Let us say that we want to control and regulate the output voltage of our power supply. So if we would like to, to control this voltage so that if we increase the amount of current that we draw, it does not change. In an ideal world, an ideal voltage source would mean that no matter how much you drew here, this would stay exactly the same. In reality, it won't be as good as an ideal voltage source, but we can try to regulate it. And the way we do that is that we take our output voltage, we take a measure of it, so you've got this potential divider here, and uh, we pass it through what we call a compensator. For simplicity, let us just say that it's a proportional compensator. For now, let's just say just an amplifier, and you've got two resistors with a gain. Now, we call that the error amplifier, and this is often what is called in the data sheet of the PWM controller IC that you buy. This will have a reference here, and you've got a measure of the output voltage here. So, as this varies, the voltage here is going to vary and is going to get compared to the reference that you want. So this is the voltage that you're getting, this is the voltage that you want, and the output of the error amplifier is the difference between the two times the compensating scale, and that's called the error. You can imagine then, if that is too far away, the voltage that you are getting is too far away from the voltage that you want, the error gets bigger, or if it's closer, the error gets smaller. Then this error gets compared in voltage mode to a fixed ramp. Now this is generated with a capacitor resistor network usually. Again, this is internal to the PWM IC as, as with this uh, amplifier here. And now what you have here is a ramp that is being compared to the error. And let me draw that a little bit bigger. As you imagine, as the error signal goes up and down, the output of this is either going to be high or low because it is a comparator and that goes to the gate drive which drives the MOSFET. And therefore, as your ref error changes, the duty will change. So from there to there will be your PWM signal or going to the gate drive. And as this goes up and down, this duty is going to change. Okay? And that is the simplest way that we close our loop, and that is called voltage mode. <clears throat> um, it's beautiful, it's simple, it's cheap, it's easy to design, however, it has got a few disadvantages. The main driver that got engineers to try and design something better was the fact that although this setup has got very good load regulation, so that when the load changes, the power supply control loop responds immediately, it doesn't have very good line regulation. In other words, if the input line changes, it takes a very long time for the control loop to respond. And it's actually very easy to see why. If you imagine, if my output changes, that is immediately seen here and the PWM reacts pretty much immediately. Right? But if the input voltage changes, first it has to go through this switch, then it has to go through this massive time constant of your big inductor, filtering inductor and capacitor, and of course that takes time before it manifests itself as an error on the output which then gets picked up and then gets returned. And therefore a standard voltage mode controller responds not very well to the changes to the input voltage. And therefore, engineers went round and decided to try and fix this, and they came up with different methods. Two of the most popular ones which are input, uh, the voltage mode with voltage feed forward and current mode, and in particular, peak current mode, which is the one that we're going to talk about. Right? So first, voltage mode with voltage feed forward. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, all they did was try to get an, a measure of the changes in the input into a control algorithm. 
at the moment, the input has to go through here in order to get into the control algorithm. And they said, okay, well, I've got this ramp. If I make this ramp proportional to V in, now if this line changes, this ramp immediately changes, and therefore my PWM immediately changes. And the performance got much, much better in terms of responding to the line. Yeah. The second method that they came up with was again going to take a measure of the input and feed it into the control algorithm. But instead of using this, they, they fed in the peak of the inductor current. Okay. So the system stays almost identical, right? But we are now going to measure the peak of the inductor current. So instead of this ramp here, we're going to take a measure of the inductor current. Usually we actually take it from the switch, which looks something like this. And instead of this ramp, we're going to feed that here. And therefore, I'm going to cross this out. For peak current mode, our ramp looks like this. So this part stays exactly the same as voltage mode. And then what they did <coughs> was they added a set reset flip flop right here. There we go. Now we've got peak current mode. So I'm going to go through it and see what actually happens. I'm sorry that this bit has got a little bit busy. <coughs> so now what we have is again, we measure and take our output voltage and we measure it. This is a measure of output voltage. Again, we compare it to a reference, exactly the same as voltage mode. Again, it goes through a compensator. For simplicity, again, let's say it's proportional. It will not be in real life. And this gives you an error. That is the difference between the voltage that you want and the voltage that you're really getting. Then that goes to a comparator. And instead of being compared to a fixed ramp, it's going to get compared to the peak of the inductor current. Okay, then you have a set reset flip flop. For simplicity, let us say our switching frequency is 200 kilohertz, and the 200 kilohertz pulse is connected to the set pin of our flip flop. So at time equals zero, this pulse goes in, it sets the um, flip flop that turns on the switch. As soon as it turns on the switch, the current will start to go up. Remember that this is getting compared to our reference. As soon as, if this is our reference, as soon as the peak of the inductor current hits the reference, it will reset the flip-flop and the switch turns off. The next cycle, again, we have measured the error. Five microseconds after this pulse, the clock is set again, the switch turns on, the inductor current rises, it hits the reference, it resets the flip-flop, and the switch turns off. And this is now closed loop, and we've got a measure of our output voltage, and we've got a measure of the current that is going through here. And again, therefore, the performance in terms of line regulation gets better, and that is called peak current mode control. We also need other things with peak current mode, such as slope compensation and so on, that we will um, <clears throat> talk about in a different video. But for now, in the simplest form, we have discussed how a voltage mode works, how voltage feed forward works in terms of changing the ramp, and how peak current mode works. So when do we use which one of these control uh, um, methodologies? Um, but current mode, it's a little bit of a pain, actually. Uh, the, the current sensing is difficult and it's invasive. The layout needs to be very, very clean. You need a slope compensation. You need leading edge blanking and so on. Uh, however, there are times that you just do not have a choice and you have to use current mode. And these are the times that you really just need to use current mode. The first one is multiple power stages. So if you've got interleaving then, and they need to be current sharing, <coughs> pardon me, then you really don't have a choice and you have to use current mode. For push-pull converters, because of the reasons that I won't go through, you really have no choice. You have to use uh, current mode. And then um, the depends whether the, dip, the, the performance of your power supply on the discontinuous conduction mode needs to be fast or not. Please note that um, 
synchronous switching like we've talked about in other videos does not have this problem but for asynchronous switching when you've got a diode and a, and a switch then on the discontinuous conduction mode voltage mode and voltage mode with voltage feed forward the performance in terms of transitive response deteriorates current mode does not deteriorate as much so then if low uh, a current performance on the, in terms of transient response is important for you then again you don't have a choice you need to use current mode. Finally, and most importantly, for all converters that have uh, right-hand plane zeros, you really don't have a choice. You have to use current mode. Now, we have covered right-hand plane zeros in a uh, different video, uh, but for now, it's very easy to say which converters have a right-hand plane zero and which converters do not. So if you look at a converter, all you have to do is look at your topology. If the diode is located before the inductor, then you do not have a right-hand plane zero and therefore voltage mode may be an option for you. If, on the other hand, your diode is located after your inductor, like this is a buck, this is a boost. If the diode is located after the inductor, then you do have a right-hand plane zero and you really don't have a choice. You have to use current mode. Note that flyback, although you have a transformer, that is actually a coupled inductor. The uh, diode is after the uh, transformer and therefore that does have a right-hand plane zero. So you are pretty much left with the majority of the stuff being in current mode forward type converters such as buck, single switch forward, two switch forward, half bridge, full bridge, those are the ones that you can use uh, voltage mode. And if you want to improve the performance in terms of line regulation, you use voltage mode with uh, voltage feed forward. So this is uh, how we select which uh, strategy we use. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope to see you at one of our workshops.